I've always lived in Fredericktown, and uh, I feel I've been done a lot of things and worked at the hospital and been in different scenarios of what's going on in the city. And I've worked at the Madison Medical Center for almost 39 years. Uh, everybody knows me in the community, and I could be good or be bad, but I, <laughs> but uh, I'm always available 24/7. I've never, you know, if anybody calls, I'll be there, and you know. I'm sure the hospital can vouch for that because I'm pretty much dedicated to my job. So, and I work at Gifford Lumber in the evening. So, you know, I'm not hard to find. So, thank you. Same question. Same question. I'm in it for the big money, the big desk, and the nameplate. <laughs> Besides that, uh, I've been here for about two years. I'm out of Alaska. I don't know if anybody knows me here or if everybody knows me here. Uh, being mayor of this town is not going to be a popularity contest for me. If I'm hated, I'm doing my job properly. There's a lot of things that need change. We're talking about a civic center here, and they're telling me I got bad water. Now, out of the two of them, I can't drink a civic center, but my kids need good, clean water to drink. They say my sewer system shot and they're out here buying a roads building, another Taj Mahal for the city. That's 4,500 square feet the city don't need when I can't flush my toilet and make the plumbing work. Okay, there's going to be a lot of pontificating going on here about all the experience everybody has. I got to tell you, I don't have any of their experience. I do not tell people one thing, take their money from them, and do something else with it. I don't tell people I'm going to do, if I ran my business the way the city runs, take your money, put a tax on the meters, and only half that money goes for fixing a problem, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm not familiar with doing that kind of business. Experience-wise, I don't have any in government yet. I hope I never have that kind of experience. I want to thank you all for showing up today. This is a real good forum, and I know this is Chamber of Commerce, so this is a business forum as far as I'm concerned. The city runs a big business. About time somebody got in there, got to be the general manager and show them how it gets it done. Thanks for showing up. Um, my name is Kelly Crocus, and I am married to Ross, who is a native of Fredericktown. Um, we had moved away for a short time, but we came back when our daughter started kindergarten because we wanted to come back to a community where our kids could grow up in a good school and you didn't have to worry about going out and you know being mugged or anything like that. Um, I know Fredericktown has its share of problems and stuff, but um, I don't think it's anything that we as a community can't fix. Um, I believe that pride has kind of slipped and I would like to bring that pride back up in our community. I would like to um, raise the communication between the city and the, the community, you know, the community, the citizens itself. And I would also like to bring back, um, I know working on the park board, we've had a lot of vandalism um, with the youth, uh, you know, just tearing up stuff. And one thing I would like to try to look into is bringing in a youth work program, that if we can get the youth uh, having pride in their community somehow, some way that maybe we can, uh, you know, stop the vandalism and that. But uh, I think we're heading in a good direction with some of the things that the park is doing um, with Rotary putting in the, uh, the walking trail. Um, but there is a lot more to do. Um, I have tried to attend the meetings for the past year, the council meetings. I know I don't know everything, but I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to search for new things and new ideas because I think the citizens of this community have good ideas and I think we need to listen for them. Uh, my name is Mark Tripp and I am uh, currently the mayor here in Fredericktown and uh, it's been an absolute honor for me to serve this, uh, uh, the last two years here and uh, to serve you as our uh, business leaders and uh, also the residents of this town. Uh, prior to that, I uh, was Ward 3 Alderman uh, for, uh, for two years before uh, uh, running for mayor. So uh, I've had uh, approximately about four years of a 
experience in, in city government. And uh, uh, some of the comments, first of all, that were uh, made are just factually untrue. And uh, as far as us taking money and uh, for one thing and doing with another is, uh, is false. It has uh, been a policy from day one when I stepped in as mayor. Our first policy was not to transfer funds from one fund to pay for another. Each department is, uh, our utility department is self-sufficient. And uh, as far as the, the water and the sewer, those are things that, uh, uh, that are mandated by the federal and state government. There's, the only thing that we can do is do what we're being told. Uh, whether we like it or not, there are mandates that uh, uh, if the city of Fredericktown does not take part of, you're looking at a fine of up to $10,000 a day, $10,000 a day. Um, I'm not willing to, uh, uh, to do that. So, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce and its members. I've, I've had a, uh, uh, a blast the last two years uh, working with you and, and working with many of you uh, on, uh, on, on many issues. So uh, uh, with that, Sandy. All right, thank you. Our next question, and we'll start with Andy on this one. How do you feel about the half cent sales tax increase on the April ballot going toward financing water and sewer infrastructure improvements? That's me. That's a, I, I, I got to tell you that the half cent, it works for me. Why not make it 20 cents? Why not 50 cents? If you're going to jack it up, jack it up, because they're not going to stop there either. The money goes out every day for probably something else we probably don't need, can't use, but they're going to jam it down our throats anyway. I'll give you an example of that. I haven't been here long enough to really know how everything runs. The way, what I do know is they sent me a slip in the mail, said cut your grass or it's going to cost you $250 and up to a year in jail. I'm looking at that going, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I can get less for drunk driving. What, what is the deal with the half a cent tax? We don't need it. What we need to do is cut some of the expenses we have, deal with this thing like we're out of money. We are. There is no money in the city left. Okay? We don't need a new tractor. We don't need another anything. And we don't need to keep jamming people that are already paying the bills. That would be any landowner, any business owner, any apart anybody that owns an apartment. People that live in apartments don't believe they're paying that property tax. It's tacked right onto their rent. This is just another something that they want to get in the, the pockets of businessmen to do their job. Nobody comes and collects the tax where I work. They don't send down an accountant. They don't do anything for me. My time's up. Thanks. Um, I know that the half-cent sales tax is something um, it's supposed to be going towards improvements that need to be done, have to be done. Um, do I like it? Well, no, as a, you know, as a citizen of the community, who likes to ever pay more? Um, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck in a situation where we're going to have to do something. Um, I'm not sure what all has been, um, you know, solutions, you know, have been exhausted. I don't know. I would like to look into that. But um, I know that it's supposed to go to something that we're going to need to do. Um, as far as the half cent sales tax uh, goes, it was a, uh, a solution that uh, we proposed uh, to the uh, city council uh, for improvements that, again, are mandated, that are out of our hands. Um, you know, as a local government, you are uh, bound by state and federal laws. And, uh, and as Kelly says, do I like it? No, I, I don't like it. What I also don't like is decades of mismanagement of 
our water and wastewater system. Uh, you know, we are asking for the half-cent sales tax to pay for these. That way, we don't have to um, jack your water rates up uh, and, and sewer rates up. You look at uh, uh, Met Metropolitan Sewer District in, in St. Louis, they are having the same problems that we are, sewer. They are proposing that your bill be $100 a month for just that. Um, I'm not willing to give control to the state and federal government for them to come in and dictate our rates. I think that is up to your elected officials in your community. And uh, uh, grants, small interest loans that we looked at, we either weren't eligible for or you had to give up control of your rates to another uh, government. I'm not willing to, to uh, stake my claim on unknowns. And uh, so this is money that will uh, take care of these improvements. And one more thing, with this sales tax, we've not added one penny of debt to our water and wastewater. Since I've been mayor, we've not added one penny to our debt, period, within the city. And I will continue on that course. Well, uh, one thing about the half cent sales tax is, you know, it's it's not putting the pressure on the community to pay like in the, you know, everybody's going to be paying it. You know, it's just a way for the cash flow for the city. You know, they can use that for their upgrades that they need to do with their water system and stuff, you know. And we, there's a lot of, you know, work that needs to be done to it. And this way, like Mayor Tripp said, you know, we don't have to pass an extra cost into the community. That means everybody that comes through is going to be helping us pay. You know, we can kind of spread it out you know, and not burden, you know, our community for it. So, and I, you know, I feel it's a real responsible thing that they're doing because, you know, we're not gouging our residents and stuff, you know, for extra money and trying to go out reaching reach in other areas to get funding, so. Thank you. There are also some brochures on the back table that um, tell a little bit about the um, proposal for the half cent sales tax so if you want to pick one of those up on your way out you're welcome to do that our next question and we'll start with Kelly on this one what changes if any do you believe need to be made within the city of Fredericktown um, well I think I kind of touched on that when I uh, spoke first um, I think we do need to bring I think we still have some pride but I think we need to build it um, again through um, maybe a summer youth work program if we can get the youth you know uh, having some pride in their community and uh, because most of them because I do work with the kids and a lot of them you know as soon as they graduate they, they want out uh, my daughter is actually the opposite she wants to come back she wants to teach at Fredericktown she wants to coach she wants to raise her family here and I want to make that a good community for her and her family um, I also think that we do need to take care of the city workers. Um, I'd like to look into, I know some um, of the questions have been about some health care, you know, um, but uh, they are the ones that keep the city running. If we didn't have, you know, the trash pickup, you know, it'd pile up on the streets. If, you know, we didn't have those guys that go out and fix the electric when it's pouring down rain and lightning and thundering, you know, um, but I do think we need to take care of our city workers as well. Um, but we also need to listen to the uh, citizens of the community. And uh, I would encourage them to uh, come to the meetings. Uh, as m most of the meetings that I've been to, there haven't been very many unless there's something been really, you know, something major on the um, agenda that has got people riled up. Um, but I would like to, you know, keep keep it open keep the communication open between the citizens and the council uh, there are definitely changes that I uh, would like to uh, like to see within the city I would like to uh, have more of a working relationship in a, uh, a rela relationship with the county uh, more than what it is I uh, the last two years has is, is, is been a struggle trying to uh, to make uh, 
county residents, county officials, and city officials to realize that um, we're part of the same thing here. I mean, there's, yes, two, two different local governments, but why can't you work together? We are Madison County. Madison County is Fredericktown. And uh, uh, so, you know, that relationship has got to change. It's got to get better. Um, we've made major changes as far as our, our utilities in, in the last two years. Uh, the reliability of our infrastructure as far as electric, uh, we've made major, major projects or, or, or change to that. Our police department. I think that it's very evident to know that we have uh, hired the right man uh, in uh, Captain Hovis to come in and, uh, and start bringing pride back to our police department. They're more visible. They're out doing their jobs. They are good uh, men and women in our police department. And uh, I, I have uh, pride myself on making sure that they have every tool available to, uh, to do their job and to uh, do it well and uh, you know so uh, I think that we need to continue to do that we need to continue not just the police department but every department give them the tools as long as uh, the uh, the funds are available and we can uh, work work together as a community as, as a whole Well, it's like you reiterate on everybody else says, you know, it's hard to get community together on anything that the city needs. You know, I wish more people would come to the council meeting. I mean, it's hard decision when there's seven of us up there, you know, trying to make what's better for the city, you know, and, and if the community don't tell us, you know, we have, we have to go on our own reactions on what we need to do. You know, we'd like to hear from the community what they would like to have. You know, you know, sometimes you make some hard decisions and it's, it is hard to make changes for any kind of department or whatever you do. But, you know, it's, it's best if, if the community tells us too. But, you know, after the fact that it's done, you know, nobody, you know, nobody knows about it. And then if they ain't coming and listening to what we're doing, you know, it's hard to make that change, you know, where it's the right change or the wrong change. You know, as far as what's changing for the city, you know, it's, it's really going to be a community thing. You know, you can't just, you know, rule out just seven people up there on the council, you know, trying to decide everything for the city. You know, it's hard to do. You know, it, we all got to work together, you know, the same way at the county. You know, we, we're all as a whole. You know, you can't, you know, you want to try to work together with people with the changes that you need. And, you know, it's, you know, it's just a constant battle, you know. So that's, you know, that's, that's my feeling, you know, what needs for the city, you know, more communications with, you know, both uh, governments, you know, and you're not going to get nowhere if you ain't got that. So, in the city, thank you. Now, a lot of this just comes down to jobs, and we don't have any here. Our kids can't go to work in their own town, and I don't know how it got that way, and it really doesn't matter to me. We need some place where people can get up in the morning get dressed and work in this town. Farmington looked like this just a few years back. They let businesses in. They let manufacturers come back. You want another park? Let's have somebody else pay for it, like bigger business, box store. I hear everybody going, Walmart ain't it. Yeah, it is. They employ a lot of people, not to mention the grounds people, the maintenance people that come in, the distributors that bring money here. We need more of that. We don't need more government. We need government to get out of it. We need the city to get out of it. They don't pay my bills. They don't show up to do any of my work. The people in here are chamber of commerce. This is business here. Believe it or not, city is big business. It's just not a bunch of people paying a lot of people to go do the jobs that other people can get done. Black River Electric needs to be here. They'll lower my rate. Tourist sanitation needs to be here. They'll lower my rate. The system's been in use for so long. Everybody's used to paying into that going, 
It's such a good thing. There's somebody out there who can do it cheaper. Most everything the city needs to do needs to go out for bid. And then the city just needs people to check on what they're doing. You can have all the parks you want, but when you're broke, you need either more money or forget it. Don't buy it. Everybody has a house, wife, kids here. You don't run your budget like the city does. You just don't run that credit card up. And then when you're out of money and you're out of credit card, keep going and depend on the county or the state to bail you out. It's time we bailed ourselves out. Thank you. Okay, our next question um, affects a lot, not only businesses, but also residents and uh, through the Chamber of Commerce and, and people as, as we go out and talk to our current business owners and those who are thinking about coming into the area. The uh, cost of the electric and other utilities within the city is, is a big can't stay in business according to them or they choose to go someplace else what if anything can be done to allevi alleviate this issue for small businesses and residents first of all uh, since uh, the word electric was used uh, in 2010 uh, I vetoed the electric rate increase. There's not been a mayor veto any piece of legislation uh, in the last 50 some odd years in Fredericktown. I stood up with the residents and the business leaders and I vetoed that. I was overridden by the council. Um, I will continue to stand up for the uh, the taxpayers and the businesses um, you know is it, 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 I'm proud to say that we have in in the budgets that we've been able to pass still um, have found money to be able to uh, help uh, to be a member of the chamber uh, from the city but as far as the the uh, the uh, water rates and electric rates they are still uh, very low compared to what uh, the surrounding communities are. The electric is uh, uh, something that I have worked on and the reason why I vetoed it is because the businesses in this town subsidize the residential uh, people. There's, it's, it is not fair. My goal and my plans are to, to make it more fair so that the businesses aren't subsidizing the uh, the residents and um, you know Black Rivers mentioned well that's that's sort of the opposite of what the city does I would like to uh, look at Black Rivers model and, and, and sort of model our uh, electric after that I do believe that our electric will be lowered we all know that the uh, uh, 20 million dollar project of the gas turbines are being built in the business park um, my goal is to have these things running 24 hours a day. In doing that, we're not paying $13,000, $15,000 a month to Ameren UE to get the electric into Fredericktown. You eliminate that because you're generating your power here. And, and uh, yeah, boy, I could talk forever about these <laughs> things. So, uh, anyway. <clears throat> Well, as far as the rates in the city, I mean, you know, we've got a lot of empty buildings. You know, I would like to see us try to help businesses come in, but, you know, it, it's hard to help them out when we get stuck with a, a lot of bills, you know. But, you know, you know do you want to try and fill our uh, empty spots up or do you want to lose money? I mean, it's, you know, it's tit for tat, you know. But as far as the generators that we're putting in the business park, that was – Something last time I was in office that me and Jim worked hard on, it was finalized. Now they're getting to be built, you know, at no cost to us, you know, Mopeps, you know, putting them in. And, you know, that's going to be a big asset, I think, for the city to make it grow because, you know, we're going to have backup capability for all businesses that come into town, you know. Perhaps a little storm don't hit that area, you know. <laughs> but, 
you know, it, it's just a big asset for the city to have something like that. And as far as the rates, you know, we we try to work with every every kind of rate issue. You know, we don't like to pass any cost on to anybody. You know, we work on the budget every year. You know, I know Mark has and I have when I was in there before. It, it's tight. You know, you know, you have to appropriate that money where it needs to go. You know, you you know, it just goes down. You know, making decisions. You know. What do you do, you know, to keep the city function? You know, we feel that the turbines that we, natural gas units that we got is going to be a big asset to bring industry in because, you know, there were several cities that was in market for that. You know, they chose us, you know. We worked hard to get them here, and we feel that's going to really help our community. And, you know, yeah, thank you. I was starting to like him. He's talking my language. Let's get the businesses in here. It's the same deal. Businesses don't mind paying the bills that we owe. But there's nobody in business that didn't go in it to make money. Okay? You can you can say what you want. We're all bad guys. We're big corporations. We're out to rob. No, we're not. We're out to make a living just like everybody else. The electric rate, you're right. It's probably not going to go down real soon. I just got another bill. I got $10 tacked on a meter that at my particular house don't even work. I got an electrical engineer from the city coming out. This is ongoing since uh, uh, Dean Tripp owned that building. Now, he's had it for how many years? They still couldn't get it fixed. They're jacking me up for an electric bill. I'm hearing all this stuff about how good city electric is. They can't even fix a stinking meter at my house. My electric bill going down? Yeah, they tack 10 bucks on that meter that don't work on me this month. Anybody see a pattern here but me? It's not going to go down. They're not going to let the sunset. When the sore is fixed, that tax is not going to go away. When they do this electric thing, that $10 a month is not going to go away. Somebody has to make it go away. To do that, you need money. Businesses bring money to the community. If they put the bill, let them. Let's give them the incentives. Tax breaks, land breaks, rezone what they need to get in here and get jobs in here. We are broke. I'm going to continue to say it. There's no money left. We need some more in here or we need to stop the spending. We're hemorrhaging money here. The bleeding's got to stop. Thanks. Well, I have to agree. We do need some industry in here. Um, as far as how to bring it in, you know, that's something I would have to look into. Um, for the small businesses, I would like to find out exactly when this bypass went through. I myself find using the bypass quite a bit in bypassing downtown Fredericktown. Um, and, I, and I hate that for the small businesses because we've had some businesses that have been here for many, many years, and we are getting um, the, the mustard seed mercantile, a great little store, um, has just moved into the, on uh, East Main. Um, I would like to find or create a program that would bring in people to the downtown area. Fredericktown has a rich history. You know, how can we bring those two together? You know, um, the Azalea Festival, you know, that brings people in once a year. But what else can we do? We have the Madison County Fair. We have the cub um, But we need to pull those people also into the downtown area during other times. Um, but, yes, I agree. We do need industry. Um, we need to give incentives somehow, some way. Um, and even for the small businesses, I would, I, I don't know that this would be possible, but I would like to see maybe an incentive somehow uh, for on-time payments. I don't know if that could be something that would be feasible. It, you know, I, if I'm mayor, I'm just the mayor. I also have council members, you know, and the citizens of the community. You know, how would this work? You know, the business owners, how would it work? Um, I, I have great, you know, all kinds of ideas running through my head, but I do need people to work with to see if this is going to work and try to make this community a better place for everyone. Thank you. That, some of those answers kind of answered our next question that I'll
try to combine it a little bit, um, talking about needing economic development and in industry, whether it's small business or larger business, do you have or what do you think would be a good plan to bring in businesses to the community, whether it's incentives, uh, tax breaks, some anything that can help not only the small businesses start up here, but bring in some of the larger businesses that can bring a lot of jobs to the area. Well, me and Jen, last time I was in office, we had talked about making up some kind of incentives for businesses to come in. You know, we was even starting a project like downtown empty buildings where we could have a data on what kind of a cost and everything is in each building. I don't know if that was ever followed through with or not. So if people come to town could see what they was, you know, getting into and what building, you know, that they was, uh, you know, the rates and all that was happening. And we talked about giving them, uh, you know, lesser deposits, you know, just to help them get it started. You know, it, you know, you got to look at all of these things and still you don't want to lose money, but but you want to give an incentive for people to fill our buildings up. And far as, you know, trying to get people to come to our community, you know, I feel back to the turbines. I mean, you know, businesses knows that we got some kind of backup system. You know, maybe that'll be another good selling point for us to get somebody to, you know, move a big business here in town because we have power available because Ameren does drop us out a lot. And, you know, that's where most of our power outages comes, you know, from coming into the city so we can feed back through our grid and keep all of our uh, businesses, you know, satisfied where they don't have to close down when we have a power outage. You know, we're at the mercy of Ameren on a lot of cases, you know. And, you know, and you know, I feel that we need to work with the people trying to fill our building. You know, I mean, you know, we, we lose money a lot, but, you know, do you want to give them a chance and go ahead and lose the money? You know, sometimes yes, and then sometimes no, you know. But I feel that's the only way we're going to get our downtown to grow is to kind of give a little, you know, and hope that when they get started, that they'll stay in business, you know, we don't want to burden them right off the bat. So, you know, it is hard to start up anymore. So, thank you. The, the incentives are simple. Come on in here, put up a big building, put a lot of people to work. We'll ding you right after you put the building up, right after you get it underway. Right now, we need, here we go again, we need jobs, we need the money, we need the businesses in here. Find the piece of land you want. I'll rezone it for you. You run down any highway in Missouri, there's signs on the side of the road before you hit every exit. There's a McDonald's here. There's a Taco Bell here. There's a Burger King here. Other businesses. Once you got them off the road, everybody's talking about the downtown empty buildings down here. Right down the road here is right off the highway. That's access to everybody. Well, that draws them in here. You're, you're trying to get them downtown to find the subways. I've tried that before. The business community is moving out here by the highway. The people that have empty buildings downtown, they'll fill up. There's lots of lawyers, lots of medical stuff going on here. This is no more, no less different than downtown Anchorage, Alaska. Quarter of a million people, they worried about the same thing, all the empty buildings downtown. That became the actual business district for finance and all the legal stuff. All the stuff that came off the major highway was where the shop malls was, where the people was, where everybody was spending money and everybody had jobs. This is not the only town that's ever had no money and came back to it. About every town in Alaska has done the same thing, did it from scratch. Nobody wants to take the hit. Everybody wants the benefits. We're out of money. Again, let's go get some. I want to court these people. I want to go out and actively go get them to come here and build here. Hey, it, it, it's simple. Thank you. Um, well, I think I kind of touched that on the last question. Um, incentives. Um, and yes, I think we actively need to go out and get them. I do. Um, 
I would like to know um, the board that is supposed to be going out and getting them, you know, what have they done? Um, I know that it's going to take give and take. It's going to take compromise to bring them in. Um, but until I can get in there and be in that situation, I'm really not sure what I can, you know, say to answer that. But it's except incentives and maybe some tax breaks. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, first of all, as far as uh, uh, out of control spending. Um, between my first and second year, we cut almost a million dollars out of our operating budget, okay? Um, because the city was starting its downward slide again to going broke. We are not broke. We're tight, but we're not broke. And uh, as far as incentives, uh, we have worked and went out uh, across the country. We've uh, been able to uh, try to attract business as far as a meatpacking plant that was uh, uh, looking at Fredericktown, we were in the uh, the final running for that. That was going to create uh, over 150 jobs, uh, $15 an hour jobs. Uh, but we were not willing to uh, abate their taxes 100% for 20 years. Uh, the city got uh, uh, got hosed on that when Brown Shoe came in. After 20 years, where did Brown Shoe go? Out of the out of Fredericktown, out of the country. You got no tax dollars off that. Well, that building is now uh, under control of Trimfoot, and it's back on our tax rolls. Uh, the old Walmart building was sold. It is back on the tax roll and not uh, up to uh, the taxpayers to, uh, to pay those utility bills anymore. Uh, something else is we have the Industrial Development Authority. Uh, the members that I have appointed to that have went out across this country uh, and and not only that but overseas to attract businesses to to uh, try to get these industry in and uh, we've been able to uh, to build up their uh, their accounts so that they have uh, can spend money uh, to uh, attract these uh, these businesses, uh, industrial businesses here. Uh, we also, uh, with uh, the downtown, we have tried to work with uh, Fry, but that hadn't worked out. My goal is to create a uh, Main Street program that is taking off not only in Missouri but across the country. It is MainStreet.com uh, uh, if you want to go to, to look at that. That's something that I am willing to uh, to work with. There's uh, many funds with that, but not only that, but we work with the Chamber of Commerce and we have to continue to work with the Chamber so that they are involved. Um, you know, Sandy and the staff and, and the board members of the Chamber has done a great job of, uh, of actively seeking and there is a database that they've worked on and partnered with the city to, uh, to get these buildings, open buildings on to a database so that uh, they have those information to give. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, we're almost to our uh, one o'clock cutoff time, so I want to go. Ahead. I want to thank everybody for being here. I thank Jack Sadler and Kim Long from KREI, and this um, will be on there at mimoinfo.com. You'll be able to see the webcast. So if anybody that you know of wasn't able to attend today, they will be able to uh, see this. And uh, we just encourage everyone to uh, come out to the April election. Um, you have four candidates here who want to make a difference and uh, uh, just, you know, the vote counts. <laughs>